In a major move that further sets back the situation in the Korean Peninsula, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has threatened with a war with South Korea. He says such a situation can occur if, quote-unquote, 0.001 millimeter of its territory is violated. Kim has called for constitutional changes to ensure that South Korea is seen as its primary foe and that the North can occupy Seoul during a war. Speaking at the Supreme People's Assembly, North Korea's parliament, Kim said he had concluded that unification with the South was no longer possible. He called for severing all inter-Korean communication and the destruction of a monument to reunification in Pyongyang. North Korean state media reports that three organizations dealing with unification and inter-Korean tourism would also be shut down. South Korea has reacted strongly. President Yoon Suk-yeol told his cabinet that if the North carries out a provocation, Seoul will hit back with a response, quote-unquote, multiple times stronger. North Korean authorities defied South and North Korea as two hostile countries, not same race countries. This shows the North Korean regime acknowledging their nature as anti-national and ahistorical. Inter-Korean relations have worsened recently amid a series of missile tests and a push by Pyongyang. In their constitutions, both North and South Korea claim sovereignty over the whole of the Korean peninsula. At Pyongyang's year-end policy meetings, Kim called for a build-up of his country's military arsenal ahead of armed conflict, which he warned could break out any time. On Sunday, the North launched a, a solid fuel hypersonic missile just days after Pyongyang staged live fire exercises near the country's tense maritime border. These drills prompted counter-exercises and evacuation orders for some border islands in the south. We are now joined live by our correspondent, Andrew Wood from Hong Kong. Andrew, how do you see the tensions rising in the Korean Peninsula? How could it affect the region? It's a very big change, I think, of policy by North Korea. In the past, they've tended to, well, treat South Korea as being a, a slave state of the United States and uh, Japan, the two, uh, the two traditional and common enemies of uh, North Korea. By treating it actually as a separate state, I think this, uh, this is an interesting change. But by also saying that uh, unification is not possible, uh, any more with the South. Uh, it also makes it, I think, possible for North Korea to attack South Korea much more. I mean, if you think that North Korea is possible, that it's possible for South Korea and North Korea to unite, then presumably North Korea would want South Korea to be intact, that all of the big factories and uh, shipyards and high-tech uh, uh, high companies and so on would be preserved. Now it seems that, uh, that North Korea is a lot more threatening to the South and making these bellicose statements uh, right. is there a way of just reminding the South and also reminding North Korean people too who the enemy is. Andrew, the war of words between Seoul and Pyongyang isn't new. But given the hostilities, how real is the danger now of an armed conflict? There's always that danger. Um, there's been incidents in the past where uh, there have been you know, shots fired across the demilitarized zone and also in the maritime area. We, we were talking earlier about how there were uh, tense scenes, uh, provocation, well, not provocations, but confrontations to the, uh, uh, to the west of uh, the peninsula of Korea in that area. There have been shots fired many times over the past 20, 30, 40 or even 50 years there too. At the same time though, if North Korea did attack South Korea, um, it would probably be, well, not quite suicidal, but remember, you know, America, South Korea has America on its side, and it also has Japan on its side too, which is interesting considering they are traditional enemies uh, going back for before the Second World War. Um, so I think that if North Korea tried to attack, then, um, then the Americans would 
basically try to destroy uh, North Korea. But there is, of course, the risk that one or even two uh, nuclear missiles, nuclear-tipped missiles, uh, uh, North Korea may be able to fire some of those in the direction of America. We don't know where they might land. So there are, that is a very, very big risk, too. Indeed, a risk of a nuclear war out there. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us on the broadcast to give us your insights.